go. All right. So, guys, let me get her caught up, and then we'll be all set. And we're going to spend a couple minutes, and we're going to look at the calendar. Um, there have been some changes that I'd like to share with you. Um, leave this one face down, and there's your lab for today. So, guys, there's been some changes that I want to share with you, and I also want to talk with you about wrapping up the end of the quarter. And guys, I know that as the end of the quarter draws near for you, um, there are very, very real concerns about grades. Um, and so I wanna look at the calendar with you, and then I wanna have a really open and transparent conversation with you about the way we handle grades, and I would even propose to you maybe the way grades should be handled. Um, so guys, looking at the calendar, uh-oh, this didn't load properly, sorry, just a second. Let me load this off of here because that's actually the old version of this. Um, all right, starting again. Um, so guys, looking at the calendar, um, let me explain to you where we are and how the quarter is going to wrap up. And we're going to do this through the lens of the three things that contribute to your grade. And guys, those things are homework, labs and activities, and then tests. Um, so let's take them one at a time. So first of all, relative to homework, and guys, none of this should be surprising to you. If it is, that's on you, because we've been talking about this every day for the last two weeks. So guys, relative to homework, you're done. Um, the cutoff for homework was the day that you took the test. For you, that was the 2nd of October. Midnight that night, the submission form shut down. And guys, we are done with late homework. There may be some late homework assignments that I haven't graded yet, I haven't entered yet. Um, but guys, you've done what you can do. So if you're missing homework assignments, um, either they're in there and I haven't recorded them yet, or you didn't enter them and it's just too late. Um, then guys, relative to labs and activities. Labs and activities are not due the day of the test. You already knew this. Labs and activities are due on an end of quarter cutoff date. As we've been sharing for weeks, that cutoff date is um, Friday. Um, so guys, if you have any labs or activities that you would like counted towards your first quarter grade, guys, those need to go in the basket. And please don't interrupt my classes to turn these in. Come in after school, come in between classes. Um, but guys, these are due um, tomorrow by 2.45. That is a hard cutoff. Um, guys, understand though that both of those things that I just shared with you need to be a little bit flexible depending on if you've been quarantined. But guys, you've got to understand there's no way for me to know that you've been quarantined. They, they, they were working towards recording this in our attendance book. They did it for a couple days. They pulled it back. Guys, I have no idea which ones of you have been quarantined. Understand if you have, I will work with you, but you need to come and talk with me and let me know that you've been quarantined, that's why you're missing assignments, um, and they, that you're working towards that. Guys, don't make assumptions. I don't know who's been quarantined. And also don't wait. Don't come to me after fall break and go, but, 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 because you need to be proactive about this. Um, <clears throat> so that's homework and labs and activities. Then guys, the only other thing that we have left is this test. I am not going to hand that back to you today um, for two reasons. One is there's people in this room that haven't taken it, and I don't want to try to sort through who those people are. So guys, I'm not going to hand your test back to you. Um, if you'd like to see them, I'd love to share with you, with you at the end of the class period today. Um, swing by after the lab. I'd love to show you. Um, but guys, with that said, I think it's appropriate to not share the test with you um, simply because there's only one essential, and that's the table at the top of the thing. Hopefully by now, you all have clicked on this, and you've pulled up this list. Um, this is listed by student number. The first thing that you will see is your test score. The second thing you will see is whether or not you um, demonstrated mastery of the essentials. The next thing you will see, which is the opposite of the previous column, is whether you're qualified for remediation. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. So if you demonstrated essential mastery, you don't need to do remediation and vice versa. 
But then guys, the other column that I added is this, and I think you understand this. If you demonstrated essential mastery, there's no reason for you to do remediation because you know the essentials. So if you demonstrated essential mastery, but got below 85% on the test, um, then guys, there's credit coming your way and there's nothing you need to do. So if you scored below 75, but demonstrated essential mastery, I raised your grade to 75. If you um, scored between uh, 76 and 84 and demonstrated, well, 75 and 84, and demonstrated essential mastery, then you have extra credit coming to you, and that is entered in an extra credit category in the grade book. Now, guys, with that said, you need to, I don't know if you guys know this. Do you know that Skyward has a bug that will not allow you to go over 100% with extra credit? Because if you don't understand this, um, this could be impacting your grade in other classes as well. If your grade is based on weighted, weighted categories, like 15% homework, 25% labs, whatever percent tests, guys, if your grade is established that way, if you get greater than 100% in a category because of extra credit, Skyward just quits giving you extra credit. And guys, there's tons of people whose grade could be higher based on their extra credit, but Skyward won't do that. And I talked to the people at the district, and they, they agree that it's a bug, but it's expensive to fix, and so they're not going to. Um, so guys, what I do is I actually go back and hand calculate your grade, and then I do a grade override if, if that's necessary. So guys, right now there's the possibility that if you've done well in homework, that extra credit is not increasing your grade. Okay, so guys, this is where we are. We've looked over the calendar. You have a sense of this. When you find your student ID number, you can look and see whether or not you qualify for remediation. Guys, this is where we are right now. Any questions about the calendar or analyzing your test? You guys okay with that? Okay, so then guys, moving along, the next thing we need to look at is this. Remediation has changed. Um, and this will be the case unless things change later in the year. Guys, our remediation program, which we've developed over years, works really, really well so long as we've got students in school consistently. What we're finding is that our remediation program is unmanageable when we've got A's and K's and L's and Z's and quarantines and all this other stuff. So guys, what we're doing is we are opening up and then significantly restricting um, remediation. So it goes like this. Everything is now optional. You no longer need to come to sessions during school. Um, guys, this is all completely open-ended. So basically what we've done is we've given you four resources to help you relearn the essentials. So guys, resource number one is the remediation video. Certainly I'd encourage you to watch it, but if you choose not to, that's your choice. Then guys, we have a uh, review assignment. Um, it's exactly what you'll see on the test. Uh, here's the assignment, here's the answers. Here is another review assignment. There's the assignment, there's the answers. Um, so guys, three resources to get you ready for the replacement test. The fourth resource is your teacher. But if you go and look at the calendar, you will notice that the remediation sessions on the calendar are now gone. Um, initially, we had remediation sessions on Monday and Tuesday. Those are off. Your teachers will be available. You're welcome to come by and ask questions. But guys, you have no formal obligation to come to school in order to do these remediation sessions. It was just too hard to manage. So three resources. You got the video, you've got two assignments, you've got your teacher, if and when you choose to approach them. But then guys, this is the hard, non-negotiable deal. The replacement test is Tuesday morning at nine o'clock. Only Tuesday morning at nine o'clock, never after that. No. So Tuesday morning at nine o'clock is the replacement test. If that doesn't work for you, please come and talk with me. If you don't come and talk with me ahead of time, you missed it. The only reason that we will be flexible on this is um, if you've been quarantined. 
So guys, if you've been quarantined, we can work with you, but that is the only instance where we're gonna be flexible unless you come and talk with us ahead of time about rescheduling the replacement test. Go ahead, man. Oh no, it should, no, 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 sorry, it's Wednesday. So here, let's look. So um, yeah, so here, so it's, it's the 14th. And then if we look at the calendar, sorry if I misspoke, um, it's on uh, Wednesday the 14th. Sorry, my fault, go ahead. The what? Oh, and what is the time? Okay, so take it beforehand. If you need to remediate. Guys, it sounds like the, the PSAT is being administered on Wednesday. Um, you're just going to need to take it before then. Um, we have to have kids off campus at 11.15. Um, it's a long story, but it's a minimal day. Um, and so we won't be doing anything after that. So you'll just have to take it ahead of time if you need. So guys, any questions about all of this? The change in remediation, what's going on with the test, all of that good stuff. Ryan, were you going to say something? You guys all good? Okay. So guys, with all of this said, um, let's switch gears for just a second and uh, we need to have sort of a philosophical conversation. Um, so guys, this is about your grade for first quarter. Um, so let me explain to you the way that Ms. Call and I approach grades. Um, for some of you, you're gonna find this refreshing. For some of you, you may find this frustrating and I'm okay with that. But guys, you need to hear the spirit of what I'm trying to communicate to you. Um, guys, currently my inbox is filling up with emails from students saying, how much credit, extra credit do you offer in the quarter? Um, I've worked hard and I deserve an A. And guys, if you don't understand this, that argument is so riddled with, with, with false assumptions because we need to talk about this and we need to talk about how we think about grading in this class. So let's first of all talk about that idea that I worked hard and I deserved an A. Because guys, the problem is, is if you're going to take that stance, then the other side of the argument must be true as well. And if you didn't work hard, you don't deserve an A. But then it also digs a little bit deeper into this idea of deserving an A. And guys, that's the response that I've been sending back to these kids is, Upon what are you basing this idea that you deserve an A? And guys, they never talk about their schoolwork. What they talk about is my 4-0. And what they talk about is I set a goal. And what they talk about is, is my mom said I need a 4-0. And my mom said I should get an A. And guys, the problem is this. Those are all wonderful, flawed, but wonderful ideas. But guys, in order for us to talk about grades, we need to talk about fundamentally what grades are. And it's really simple. Guys, your grades are an indication of two things. Your understanding of course content and the quality of your work when it was due. That's it. Do you know the stuff and did you do good work? Now, guys, for some of you, I pray that this is refreshing because unlike any other year, and guys, I don't know if you understand this or not, getting into college this year is going to be a completely different game. Many, many schools are throwing out the ACT. So your ability to get into school is going to be based upon your GPA. And guys, right now, over 25% of the graduating seniors have a 3.8 or better GPA. Guys, the reason is because we've created this culture that says, hey, let's just give you enough extra credit to make everything okay. And it's going to be really, really hard for you guys to differentiate yourselves as you're applying to schools. Because I'll be honest with you, if I were you all, at the end of every quarter, I would go sideways. Because you know this happens. Guys, many of you are the kind of students that are doing excellent work throughout the quarter. School matters to you. You set aside the time and you invest the effort. Guys, and don't, effort's important but you're doing the things that you need to do in order to do well in a class and you earn that A and then you know darn well that your teacher is handing out A's to a bunch of knuckleheads because they're in school. They come in after school and clean their desks. Guys, I would be furious 
Because what they're basically doing is they're taking the hard work and the good work that you've done, and they said, that's not important. I'm just going to give this same grade to everybody. Um, and, and that's great. You, you did this right, but I don't care, and I'm going to devalue it by, by awarding other people the same results. And guys, that's not okay. So, guys, here then is where the conversation goes. Your grades are finalized. The only thing that you can do right now to change your grade is um, to turn in late lab work and activities. And then in addition to that, the other thing that you can do is do the replacement test. So, guys, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. And I'd, I'd like to read this to you because... All of this is based upon the idea that we have data. But guys, because we're scientists, we also understand that data can be inexact. And this quarter, I would suggest that our data size is way too small simply because this has been a weird quarter. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. It says this. Now that first quarter grades are finalized, it's time to reflect on your performance over the quarter the grades you earned, and the impact that these unusual times had on your first quarter performance. Based on this reflection, please choose one of the options below. So guys, option one is this. I believe my grade is an accurate reflection of my mastery of the material and the quality of my work. As such, I am in agreement with my grade. And that doesn't mean it's an A. Because that means you could look at your work and go, man, this is crap. I earned that D. Or you look at your work and you go, yeah, there are some gaps in my understanding here. And so it makes sense that I got to be in the class. doesn't matter what my goals were. This grade really does reflect my understanding of material and guys, also the quality of your work when it's due. And guys, for some of you, this is going to be eye opening. You're going to go, oh my gosh, my grade actually is what it should be, even if it's not an A. Now, guys, number two, and I'm really serious about this. Second option. After reflecting on my mastery of first quarter content and the quality of my work when it was due, I believe my grade is not an accurate reflection of these things. As such, I would like to schedule an appointment where I can make an evidence-based agreement for why my grade should be different. Guys, this is one of my favorite things about teaching is when I have students they come to me and they say, Mr. Knappenberger, I got to be in your class, but I believe it should be an A. Not because of my goals, not because of emotions, not because of my GPA. I believe my grade should be different because I have evidence that would support that. Because these are amazing conversations. And I'll tell you right now, I raise kids' grades every year, every quarter. This happens all the time. But guys, understand it's not going to be based on emotion or goals or any of that. Show me why your grade should be different, and I'd love to change your grade. But guys, with that said, I'd like to read number three to you. Um, this has been an interesting quarter. And I feel a responsibility, Ms. Colin, I feel a responsibility to honor that. This has been a weird quarter. And I think some of you may be saying to yourself, this just isn't me. I didn't know what this is going to look like. I got quarantined and it threw me off and I was never able to recover. So guys, this is what we're thinking relative to that. After reflecting on my mastery of first quarter content and the quality of my work when it was due, I believe my grade is not a reflection of my capabilities as a student. I agree that my grade is accurate, but also believe my performance during first quarter was adversely affected by the complexities of this mess. As such, I would like my first quarter grade to be based on more data. Please average my first and second quarter grades and use this grade to replace my first quarter grade, assuming that this leads to a grade increase. So guys, simply what we're saying is this. Yeah, my grade's right. Looking at my first quarter work, my grade's right. But this isn't me. This is me trying to get adjusted to this new reality. And I would love the opportunity to change the course of this by bringing in my second quarter grade. Guys, if you choose this option, what I will do is at the end of second quarter, I will take your first quarter grade by points 
and your second quarter grade by points, and I will average them. And if that grade increases your grade for first quarter, I will go back and do a grade override, and I will change your first quarter grade to whatever that average is. Does that make sense? So guys, for example, if you got an 89% first quarter, which is a B plus, and then you got a 95% average second quarter, the 85 and the, I'm sorry, the 95 and the 89 would average out, and the average is better than 92, and I would change your B plus to an A for first quarter. This is the opportunity, guys, to regroup around how crazy this year has been, because I think it caught us off guard and give you the chance to sort of readdress this. But guys, you'll notice how this finishes. It says, I understand the second quarter will not improve regardless of what happens within our school system unless I implement strategies for overcoming the challenges of our current situation. Below are the plans, the changes I plan to make. Because guys, understand good intentions don't get you anywhere unless you actually think about what happened that was, what didn't go well first quarter and what can I do to fix this? So um, let's think about this. Um, I will not see you before the end of the quarter. So guys, let's take a couple minutes and let's fill this out. It's the page that's facing down. Please put your name on there. <clears throat> Please put uh, period A1 on there. Let me know what you're thinking. You know what, guys? Here, think through this with me. You probably need some time to chew on this, right? And you probably need access to your grades. Um, and there's no reason that we can't do this after fall break. Um, we can go back and do grade changes anytime we want. So guys, let's do this. Rather than hurry and do this quickly, why don't you put this in your notebook um, and I'm going to collect this from you the next time I see you. I want to give you some time to actually mull this over. You guys understand this is not me pushing you off. Um, we can talk about grade changes anytime we want. This also gives us time to get your replacement test dealt with which then um, gives us space to actually know what your grades are. So guys, do you have any questions about this? I'm guessing some of you find this amazingly refreshing and you probably share some of the frustrations that I would have if I were you, that you know darn well that your grades are being devalued on a daily basis by teachers that just hand out extra credit like candy. Because um, that would be frustrating to me. So... I promise I won't do that. Not that we don't have extra credit, but it's never in response to this deathbed, I need my grade to go up thing. That's not how this works. So guys, any questions about this? We okay? Okay, so do this. Grab your labs, and this is gonna take us about 10 minutes to introduce. Um, we're gonna have to form some new lab groups um, simply because uh, we've got some interesting couplings of people gone. Um, so guys, grab this lab and uh, grab something you can write with. And this lab is actually based on a principle that we need to talk about um, because it's, it's, it's a new idea. Um, so guys, be ready to write all over this lab. We're gonna doctor this thing up and change it and uh, get you over into lab in just a minute. This lab goes really quickly. Um, and so you'll see that we've got plenty of time to do this lab. So, guys, this lab is our opportunity to wrap our arms around a really big idea, which is called the law of conservation of mass. So what we're going to do in order to understand this is we're going to tear it apart, and I would encourage you to do this with me. So, guys, first of all, what does it mean that something is a law? And, guys, really, I'd, I'd encourage you to do this with me. What does it mean that something is a law? And the idea is it means that it's not up for debate, 
it is not arguable. The conversation is over. And this is an, uh, a proven, unchanging truth. It is a law. And in science, guys, these, when something achieves law status, we are confident that it is true. Well, guys, this law is about mass. So we need to remind ourselves what mass is. We know that mass is a unit of amount of matter measured in grams. So guys, mass just means matter. So then the question becomes, what about conservation? Well, guys, when we talk about conservation in this day and age, it means that you're a hippie and you recycle and you're conservation minded and you don't throw things away, which isn't too far away. But guys, in a science concept, in a science context, it simply means that stuff isn't lost. That it never goes away. And so, guys, fundamentally, what that means is this. We have a law that says that matter is never lost. Matter never goes away. But, guys, the interesting part is it's also never, uh, it's never gained. So bringing these ideas together, guys, the idea is this, and that's the definition that you need to know. In a chemical reaction, matter is never created, matter is never destroyed. And guys, the take-home message from that is actually really fascinating if you dig into it. Because it means that the water that we drink right now is the same water the dinosaurs drank. And the molecules that make up our flesh are the same molecules that made up dinosaur flesh. And guys, the, the food that the dinosaurs ate is the same food that we eat. Guys, we don't gain stuff. We don't lose stuff. We just recycle stuff. So matter is never created or destroyed. So guys, what we're going to do in lab today is we're actually going to go into lab and we're going to do some chemical reactions. And while we're there, we are going to demonstrate that this is actually true. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, by measuring mass. So you're going to go into lab and you're going to weigh a bunch of stuff and then you're going to do a reaction and then you're going to weigh it again and then you're going to do another reaction and then you're going to weigh it again and you're going to track how the mass changes throughout these reactions. Now guys, as we do this, there's only nine steps. I can do this lab in about three and a half minutes. It's going to take you a little bit longer because one, you don't know what you're doing, and two, there may be lines to get to the chemicals. But guys, this lab goes really quickly, but here's the trick. Quick doesn't mean sloppy. Guys, you've got to be really, really careful in this lab because mass changes of a hundredth of a gram is going to screw, off your screw up your observations. So guys, starting on step one, read this with me. It says, in a graduated cylinder, measure out 10 milliliters of this little guy, 1M, don't worry about it. It just tells me which concentration to grab. 1M sodium carbonate solution. Pour it into a small, uh, clean Erlenmeyer flask and rinse the cylinder. Guys, please circle the word small. This has got to be a small Erlenmeyer flask. Let me show you the difference. This is not a small Erlenmeyer flask. Guys, if you use that one, it's going to cause problems. So it's got to be smaller than that. So maybe something like this, or there's even a smaller one that's really bitty, that's fine. It just can't be a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. It's got to be smaller. Then reading along, guys, question number two. It says label a test tube, but notice it says small test tube. Guys, circle that as well. Label a small test tube. And guys, let me show you what small test tubes look like. Um, I wonder if I have one that's, yeah, this one. Okay, so guys, when we say, no, that won't work. So when we say small test tubes, ideally we mean these guys. Small, like the length of your pointer finger. Relatively small. Um, you may have one that's a little bit longer and that's fine. But guys, it cannot be this. If it's this big, it will not work. But notice what it says. It says that you're going to label this small test tube, and you're like, how on earth am I going to write on a piece of glass? Well, guys, the answer is this. 
grab a pencil. Don't do this in pen. Grab a pencil, and you'll notice that on these test tubes, there's a little white patch. Guys, that is actually abrasive, and you can write on it in pencil. And all you're going to do is label the test tube CACL2. Then as you read on, notice what it says. It says, measure exactly three milliliters of one molar calcium chloride solution. Guys, let me remind you how to do this. Our graduated cylinders don't go down to one milliliter. So here's what you do. Screw the lid off. This is just water. Screw the lid off the bottle, palm it, grab the dropper, stick it in here, suck it all the way full, drip this down to one milliliter, and then let go, suck that up, put that in the test tube, and then just do that three times. So guys, that's how you get three milliliters of this stuff. Okay, so it says measure exactly three milliliters of the calcium chloride um, and then stand it in a 50 milliliter beaker. So guys, at that point, here's what you're gonna have. This is your calcium chloride test tube standing in a beaker and then you've got the sodium carbonate in the flask. Now guys, step three, label a small test tube H2SO4. Because if you, you probably don't know, H2SO4, it says it in a second there, is sulfuric acid. Guys, if you get this on you, you've got about five or 10 seconds and then it really starts to hurt. If you get it in your eyes, you're done. So guys, goggles on the whole lab, be careful with the sulfuric acid. But again, you're gonna get three milliliters of that and you are going to put that in another small test tube and then make sure you remember this has gotta be a small test tube and then you're going to stand that up in the beaker as well. Guys, once you're there, you've gathered together all of your chemicals, and now this lab goes pretty smooth. So step number four, you are going to weigh all four pieces of glassware. And guys, obviously I bolded it and underlined it. But guys, you are going to weigh all four of these things. Don't forget to re-zero your balance. Let it settle down. Carefully weigh this. Write down the mass. You'll notice there's a place to do that in the data chart. Then guys, step number five slowly pour the contents of the calcium chloride test tube. Guys, I would circle, underline, if you grab the long test tube, you're gonna have to start over. So grab the calcium chloride test tube, pour it into the flask, give it a swirl, and record your observations. Now guys, let's be clear about the observations you're looking for. Down here in qualitative data for step five, your observations are all about evidence of a chemical change. How do you know this was a chemical reaction when you took the calcium chloride test tube and dumped it in here? So record your observations. Then guys, moving on to step six, again, carefully weigh all four pieces of glassware. Now guys, make sure you hear this. One of these test tubes is empty, right? You poured it in here, weigh it anyway. Guys, get both of these, weigh all four pieces of glassware. Then moving along to step seven, you're going to carefully pour the sulfuric acid into there. And guys, when you do, watch carefully when you dump it in. This goes pretty fast, so pour it slowly, but you gotta be paying attention right away. Give this a swirl. Again, what, ooh, again, what information, what tells you that a chemical reaction took place? And then guys, finally, once you've done all of that, step eight, you are then going to again weigh all four pieces of glassware. Then guys, everything goes down the drain, rinse everything out, put it all away, you're done with the lab. You get the idea? Okay. So guys, with all of that said then, let's flip this over and let's talk about your calculations really quickly because you've never seen this before. So guys, when you look at your data chart, you'll notice that you've got three masses. The mass before there were any reactions, the mass after the first reaction, and the mass after the second reaction. Guys, what you're gonna do is this. You are doing calculations where you're finding mass changes. And there's an equation for that that you need to write down. So guys, when we figure out change, and this is a universal equation, it doesn't matter if it's mass or temperature or time or whatever. Guys, whenever we do change, it's always final minus initial. If you don't know, the triangle means change. It's the Greek letter delta. In math, it means change. So guys, delta mass, change in mass, 
is equal to mass final minus mass initial. So final is after, initial is before, and then guys, you're going to just go to your data chart, find the mass after the first reaction, find the mass before the first reaction, don't forget units, watch significant digits, do this well. Then you're going to do that again for the second reaction. Mass before the second reaction, I'm sorry, mass after the second reaction, mass before the second reaction, plug in your numbers working down, organize your calculations. But now, guys, we've got a problem. This is the law of conservation of mass lab, which probably tells you something about what these differences should be. But the problem is this. The balances that we have in lab are good, but they're not great. So here's what we're going to agree on. And guys, it says it right there on your lab. Changes in mass less than or equal to 0 0.01 grams are understood to mean no change in mass. So guys, if your change in mass is zero, that's no change in mass. If your change in mass is 0 0.01, we are also going to call that no change in mass because that could just be inaccuracies in measurements. If your change in mass is 0 0.02 or greater, that's a change in mass and you're going to get to explain it down in your calculations. So guys, any mass change less than or equal to 0.01 grams is understood to be no change. You guys good? So we'll do the calculations, answer the conclusion questions well. Do not turn these in today. And uh, when we're done, guys, we'll go. And we'll see you after fall break, unless you have stuff to turn in or a replacement test to do. So guys, form new groups, find groups of two, grab your goggles, let's get next door. Go get them.